Okay, in this video series, I am going to go over how to use XGen in its basic form. Uh, we're going to be creating a hair groom on this character. I'll show you guys all the different components that you'd have to look at and consider for making a hair groom. Um, this is going to be broken up into different uh, chapters based on uh, what components that we're covering in XGen. This first video, I'm going to co cover um, preparing your file. This is a very, very important step, so please don't skip this to get to the fun stuff, I guess. Um, because uh, XGen is very prone to crashing, um, having bugs, um, deleting your work or causing you to have to redo your work. Um, and so if, you know, if there's any steps that you can take to make this as clean as possible, um, then please do so. You'll save yourself a lot of headache in the future. Um, so on that note, let's go ahead and take a look at how we can prepare this asset for grooming. So to prepare our asset for using XGen, what we need to do is we need to create scalp geometry, or what I like to call scalp geometry. A uh, piece of scalp geometry is a extraction of geometry from the mesh. We're not actually cutting it off, we're just more or less making a duplication. But we're selecting part of our mesh to duplicate off and grow the hair from instead of growing it directly from the model itself. The reason why we want to do that is because XGen can be really finicky um, and prone to breaking or causing bugs depending on how this model is handled. So if we go back and change anything on this model after we've created XGen groom to it, uh, there's a good chance that the XGen is going to break. So if any, if you add any polygons or remove any polygons, um, maybe mess with the UVs, delete the history on this asset and XGen was already on it, then you might be out of luck. So we create these um, scalp meshes so that we can have a clean surface that we can, we're most likely not going to come back and have to edit, and we can come back and edit the, our main mesh without worrying about uh, messing up our XGen, which is growing from a completely different mesh. So let's go ahead and make our first scalp. I'm just going to be recreating this one right here. Uh, let me go ahead and delete it and show you guys really quickly. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my mesh that I would normally grow hair from, and make it by making it scalp, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate it. So once I've duplicated my mesh, I'm going to go ahead and isolate it. Oop, not that button. And I'm going to select all of the areas where I, essentially the boundaries of where I think this particular hair description, in this case, the head hair that grows from the top of the head and maybe the sideburns, uh, is going to grow from, right? I don't need the, for this particular scalp, I don't need the um, beard area or the eyebrow area or anything like that. Generally speaking, you want to find out where you're going to be uh, growing your hair actually from. So let's say the hairline is going to be somewhere around here. Maybe the um, uh, groom comes out to here uh, or along the temples. And then we also have, of course, like our sideburn area. And then it's all going to go all the way down to the nape of the neck down here, right? Um, so uh, whatever we think our hair, wherever we think our hair is going to grow from, it's a good idea to just be a little bit more generous and give yourself a little bit more room. So even though I think the hairlines is going to uh, end right there, I might come all the way down here. You never know. It's not going to hurt to go a little bit over. Um, and if anything, it's just going to make your life better in the future. Um, if you make it too small or you find out later that you want to extend it or make any changes, um, if you don't have the polygons in that scalp, then you're kind of out of luck. So what, I do, what I'm doing here is I'm just essentially, um, oop, not that, uh, selecting a continuous edge loop that is I'm going to cut this mesh from. So I'm just going to essentially um, detach this mesh. Um, these areas back here where I'm probably not even going to grow hair, I can be a little bit messier. Um, as long as it's a little bit wider and larger than I think I'm going to need it. So I might have that one come all the way down to here and this one all the way to right here. So I have this continuous edge loop that goes all the way around. I'm going to go ahead and go to edit mesh and I'm going to go to detach and I'm going to come to face mode, select this part of the mesh. As long as I've uh, completely connected that edge loop all the way around, um, then I and did that detach. I should have two separate meshes now, right? Um, and so I'm going to take this one right here, delete it, and I'm going to unisolate. And now I have that scalp object. So that's going to be the first step for creating our scalp. So before we use the scalp to grow our groom, we're gonna to have to clean this mesh up and make this asset as clean as possible. The first step to making the scalp uh, usable is I'm going to wanna to make sure I edit and fix the UVs. So I'm gonna to come to the UV editor and it's gonna have the UVs I already had for the character, just minus you know all the face and all the other parts are deleted because I made it from the character's face. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and select 
uh, all of these shells or just I could even select the entire object, right? And I'm gonna come here and go to create planar. That's just gonna give me a really clean stitched together single piece of geometry or in the UV shell. I'm gonna come over here to modify. I'm gonna click on unfold. So that's gonna flatten it out, try to remove any distortion and make it uh, make sure none of the pieces are overlapping each other. And then I'm gonna to come to modify. I'm gonna to go to layout, open the options, come down to the bottom and for tile padding, I'm just gonna make sure this is set to a non-zero number like two or four. Doesn't have to be very large and click apply. What layout's gonna do is it's going to go ahead and shrink all of my or all of my UV shells that I've selected and it's gonna pack them into a single UV tile. And then that padding is gonna make sure that it has a certain kind of pixel distance or uh, uh, I don't know, padding distance away from the edge so there's no overlapping. I like to double check if there's no overlapping by just turning on the checkerboard. If I have a UV shell and it overlaps that boundary right there, and it, you'll see it highlights the other UV shell that it's touching. So if it's not highlighting any of the other ones, then it's good to go. So you wanna make sure that your UVs are laid out as nicely as you can. Um, doesn't You don't have to spend a long time on it. It's not that important. Um, you just need to make sure you're not getting overlapping UVs. You're trying to remove as much distortion as you can, um, maximize the space as, you, as much as you can, and making sure that your tiles are not overlapping the um, boundaries of the, these UVs. So just make sure you're using that first UV tile, especially if you're using, uh, like I was using, a multi-tile or UDIM workflow for my character. So the next steps I have to do to clean up this mesh and prepare it to grow XGen on it uh, is I need to uh, name it, freeze its transformations, and delete its history. So uh, the name is gonna be really important. First, I'm gonna go ahead and take it in the outliner, bring it up to the world so it's not um, parented underneath anything and it's parented to the world. So I'm gonna select this, press Shift P. So you can see it's not listed or parented underneath anything else. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and name it. So I'm gonna call this one, in this case, hair underscore scalp. So it's for the head hair. Um, I use underscore scalp for all the scalp geometry just so it's easy for me to find them in the outliner and select them. Um, this name is really important. You can't really, you can, but you really don't wanna change this name later on because um, XGen files that are gonna be stored outside of the Maya file are gonna be depend on this name. So if this name of this geometry changes, then all of a sudden XGen doesn't know to associate this scalp object with those files you had created. So it's a good idea to name this and not change the name. Um, what I'm gonna to wanna to do next is I'm gonna to wanna to freeze the transformation. So I'm gonna right click freeze all and I'm gonna do this before I attach the XGen. Later on, we can move the scalp around and do things with it. Um, but generally speaking, um, when you attach the XGen for the first time, you want this to be frozen out. We also wanna go ahead, and this is really important, we're gonna go here and edit delete by type history. So when we created the scalp and when we create pretty much any object, we build up history. And so this is just like Maya essentially memorizing how you created the object since you last deleted history so that it has some um, editability. It's like it's supposed to be non-destructive. Of course, um, in terms of poly creation and UV unwrapping, that's not really functional. It tends to break a lot. Um, but some other things like rigging components and constraints and other uh, objects can be stored as inputs. They're not technically history, but they still kind of show up in the same area. And if you delete history, you would disconnect them. So uh, what we'd wanna do is when we do some XGen stuff, it's gonna also sometimes build inputs or history. Uh, we, if we wanna delete history and clean up this model, which we normally do with our character or really any of our modeling assets, we'd wanna get rid of that history before we brought it into our final scene. Um, I wanna do this before I attach the XGen to this object. So I'll go edit, delete by type history. You can see now it only shows up this um, display layer that I've put it into, totally fine. Um, but now this is a lot cleaner. And so I deleted my history, I froze my transformations and I gave it a name and I unparented it from the object that, or the group it was underneath. Okay, so the last step that I'm gonna wanna take to prepare my file, cause we're not done yet, we still have one more task to do, is we're gonna set our project. So if I'm working on, let's say at the Viz Labs um, within the pipeline in the Viz Lab and I used make asset to make a Maya file, um, that already sets up a project for you. It doesn't hurt to set your project, it's already created, but you can reset it just to make sure it's set to the right folder. Um, but if uh, you're doing this on like a personal computer uh, or you're not doing it on some kind of pipeline where it has automated um, project setting tools, then you definitely wanna take this step. So setting a project just is gonna come over here to file set projects. 
is essentially you choosing a folder that you want to go ahead and um, store all of your files at. And so this is going to make, um, it's essentially all the files are going to be pertaining to this asset I'm creating are all going to be stored in like one location. It helps with referencing and it also just helps keep things clean and it, XGen is really reliant on it. So I made this little folder. I mean, this is not good practice. You know, I should store this in like a, you know, a more permanent location than my downloads folder. But I created a folder in here called XGen demo, right? And you can see this is where my file, it's called setup is stored. And inside this XGen demo file folder, I'm gonna click set. And I have not set a project in here, so I'm gonna create default workspace. Um, and if I go ahead and open up that folder, you can see that now I have this workspace um, icon. And when we start creating our XGen um, assets, uh, we're gonna start populating this space with a bunch of folders. If you start rendering with like RenderMan or Arnold or doing other things, you also see folders pop up in here as well. The nice thing about this is it makes it very portable, right? I can pick up this folder and take it somewhere else. Um, so all those files that are associated with it are here. The only thing you'd have to do in that case kind of getting out of the scope of this, um, is you would have to just make sure you reset your project um, to this folder again when you put it on a new location. So if I move this to a new computer, because it's not gonna have the same like C users Caleb downloads, let's say you put it on like somebody's Mac, right? It's gonna have a very different path. You would have to in my uh, set your project again, so set project to that folder wherever it's located. And then everything should rehook up again and be ready again. So that's all we really have to do. Um, it's a lot, but we have to extract or duplicate our mesh, cut off our scalps. For those scalps, we want to go ahead and fix the UVs for them. Um, we want to set a name. So I usually use the, the area of the body or whatever I'm growing it from, underscore scalp. Um, and then we want to go ahead and um, freeze transformations and delete history on that asset. And all those things we want to do now because once we start growing xgen we really can't go back and change those things again um, so once you've made that those fixes you're going to be fixing and avoiding like 90 percent of the issues that you're going to run into with xgen one last thing i might want to mention here is uh, i also sometimes like to set my mesh my character mesh um, into a layer so just click on this button creates a new layer and assigns that object and I do the same thing with my scalps. This just makes it easier for me to set like visibility options, right? So for instance, if I wanted to paint on this scalp, if but the head's kind of getting in the way, what I could do is I can just set that to template mode. Um, you can see the scalp isn't actually in the scalp layer. Um, and so now I can just focus on that and the underlying, the but character's mesh isn't getting in the way. Um, and then, you know, when I'm actually rendering, if I actually want to hide the scalp, what I can do is I can just set its visibility to off. Also, I can set this to reference mode so I don't accidentally click on my character. You can see I probably need to put that inside my um, that layer, but this is just one last thing I like to do to keep um, organization much simpler inside of um, 